going to talk about our projects on panning and zooming panoramas in virtual reality devices. VR devices have created growth, growing interest in a new generation of user interaction and user experiences. Such immersive digital content experiences enable users to explore scenes by panning all around. It is amazing that we can virtually be there and get, get to gaze at the third starry vista, but can we zoom in and get closer to the stars to observe them better in details in VR devices? First, it becomes more and more accessible to create high resolution panoramic imagery with the development of robotic image acquisition technology. In fact, there are thousands of such panoramas being shared online, which makes anyone with a brother being able to zoom in and explore big events, urban scape, and or the nature intimately. Each of the imagery contains plentiful details which are worth exploring. For example, this is a panorama taken from the London 2012 Olympics opening ceremony. With zooming in, user can not only observe the teams from various countries in a parade, user can even look at each single person as well. High resolution of panoramic imagery can also be surreal. Artistic are creating very large format panoramas combining high resolution imagery with AI based deep dream to create a new artistic world. By zooming in, this dreamlike appearance is best, better visualized and can be better e explored by viewer. But how can we view them in VR? As the current immersive panorama viewers in VR devices only allow users to pan and decide which direction to look at. Our goal is to enable users to zoom in and determine what details they want to explore. Actually, pan and zoom is a fundamental operation for image viewer applications on flat devices. The scene follows the movement of mouse control, especially when the mouse drags from one building to another as actually scanning a very small, small area in the huge panorama. To really more clearly, we show them in this hemispherical projection here. When user drags the mouse on the broader window, the view moves from dark red to bright red. We can see that at higher zoom level, it rotates in a smaller scale. In other words, the higher the zoom level is, the slower the panning speed becomes. So we call it a slower mode. This is very natural and intuitive on flat devices. Then raises the question, why not just use slower modes in VR? In VR devices, the direction of display is controlled by user's head rotation. If we also compensate panning to be slower in higher zooming level, it may result in two problems, physical challenges and a proprioceptive problem. Look at this example. The user first look at the Chrysler building and then zoom in and observe the de detail details of the Art Deco ornamentation by tilting down her face. The first problem is when she still want to pan down, she physically cannot tilt her head further. Next, when she zooms out, know that she's still facing down as, at her feet, but she feels like looking forward because she's seeing the horizon. And when she face up to look forward, through the screen, however, she feels like she's up in the air because and which totally upset her sense of the stability in this environment. This is the proprioceptive problem. Having experienced these problems with slower mode, we identify the following criteria for our design interface. First, users should have the freedom to look all around the environment and zoom in the details in any direction. Second, for the viewpoint, the interface should face visuals with users' real-world self-motion. As mentioned before, it's discomforting to rotate or move the horizon line. We first design a straightforward mode keeping these properties, which we call it normal mode. 
In this mode, user controls the direction of view via the head motion, head motion directly, independent with the zoom level. It allows user panning all around at all zoom levels and doesn't move the horizon after operations of zooming in and out. Let's see how it works. This is a panorama we took on the roof of Facebook office in Seattle. So here, the user first zoom in and want to look closer to the people along the South Lake Union. And then, even as he pans slowly to the right, the scenes change too rapid to observe and makes the user experience nausea and fatigue. And when the user is asked to search and look at the space needle, he got lost and spent a quite a while to find it in, a very, in this very zoom in imagery. Therefore, navigation is one of the problems in this normal mode. Another problem is that as the zoom level becomes higher, the perceived visual motion becomes faster, which in this case is eight times faster than the speed in traditional slower mode. The mismatch between the slower, slow head motion and fast display motion leads to mo users' motion sickness. Third, since the visual scene changes very fast with the head motion, user needs to move their head very carefully if they want to observe a specific spot. So in normal mode, it is hard to control scene, scene user wants to see. Based on those downside, we then identify three more properties for a desired pine and zoom viewer in VR. The display should ma match well with your perceptual movement to reduce motion sickness. Additionally, users should be able to control where they want to and expect it to see. And finally, the interface should help users to navigate in the scene. With this objective in mind, we propose first to limit the field of view to the center of the screen, enable to decrease users' perceptual motion and sick, uh, simulation sickness. Then to place, we pl to place a zoom-in center area in front of a non-zoom-in background that provides context in a per peripheral region. Here we show an example of circle mode. Though rapid panning still brings strong motion sickness, when user pans slowly, limiting the zooming visual field reduces the visual motion, and the background layer serves as a stable reference to alleviate the motion sickness. The next mode, we modify the circle transparency based on the panning velocity. It will allow the background to be visible through the zoom-in imagery during rapid head motion, which reduces the motion sickness a lot. We also add a crosshair when the circle becomes transparent to improve targeting and navigating experiments. We also propose a zoom circle mode, which adapts its zoom level to user's head motion. It zooms out during, during rapid motion and zooms back in as the view comes rest on its subject. We conduct a user study and ask 33 participants to complete several tasks. In each task, they were asked to find a specific object in the scene which is hard to notice without zooming in. Before starting the task, we gave users a short, in, a short instruction for the modes we discussed before. And in each task, we randomly assign them one of the four modes and don't allow them to change it. And we record the time spent by participant to find the target. Here we show the histogram of completion time used in normal mode. Considering several participants had, had no VR experience before and can suffer from different level of motion sickness, we allow them to quit a task whenever they feel discomfort. Here, the, for visualization purpose, we show the time as 180 seconds if they quit the task. In normal mode, there are 16 out of 89 subjects trying to keep up. And the median of all the completion time is 98, 95 seconds. Here are the histogram for um, circle mode. Fewer subjects gave up, and there are still, but there are still six out of 93, and the median time is much lower than, the normal, than that in normal mode. In both alpha mode and zoom circle mode, there's no give up, and the median time is even slower. 
In this figure, we plot the median distance from user's pen window to target along the time in each mode. We can see that the distance of alpha circle and zoom circle mode drops significantly faster than the other mode during the first 20 seconds, which suggests that both of them help the navigation. Here, the solid line only includes subjects completing the task, whereas the dashed line includes the, the give up data and meet the task as well. <laughs> Note that the green solid line in the normal mode starts at a distance much slower than others. It suggests that the users that start far from the target are more inclined to give up. We also collect several qualitative data by a questionnaire. The score arranged on a Likert scale from one meaning bad to five meaning excellent. One of the as uh, aspects we are concerned about is whether subjects experience motion sickness as using this interfaces. From the histogram and the mean scores shown here, we know that narrowing the field of view slightly improves the, the move, slightly improves the movement comfort, while adapting transparency or zoom level with panning speed significantly helps reduce motion sickness. We also ask how easy it is to navigate to other area and target to object, objects there. And the score shows a similar pattern, and alpha zoom circle and zoom circle mode still outperform the others. Finally, we asked which one they prefer to use to explore new panoramas. The result also looks similar. Based on both the qualitative and quantitative results, we come to the conclusion that normal mode is not suitable for panning zoom, panning zoom imagery, while circle mode is slightly better. Alpha and circle mode are assessed significantly better than the other two. People like this mode in different scenarios for different reasons. Some people prefer alpha circle mode when they know where to explore next. But when the user is not familiar with the panorama scene, one may prefer zoom circle mode to gradually find interesting object or area to explore. In summary, as VR devices become more popular, it is interesting to rethink how we can solve the traditional tasks which are well studied on the <coughs> flat platform. Panning and zooming high-resolution panorama discussed in this paper is just one example. And this leads us to some ideas for future work. In this paper, we haven't delved into stabilization technique or gesture interactions in the interface, and both of them could improve the user control and viewing experience furthermore. It is also an interesting problem to extend the pan and zoom interface for stereo panoramas. This comes to the end of my talk, and thanks for listening. Hi, Gonzalo Ramos, Microsoft Research. I wonder as virtual reality becomes more prevalent and you actually have synthetic scenes, not just a panoramic imagery, mm -hmm. that zoom is not much as zoom, it's more as I'm actually getting closer to the area I want to see, and then looking around is just looking around. Do you see the same techniques uh, applying, or just not necessary, potentially, for those things? Or you may be able to synthesize what a panorama may look like if you were closer, actually. Um, so your question is, why is this different in 360 video but than uh, in simulated scene, or? I know why. A panorama uh -huh. is different than actually a yeah. 3D scene, a very complex and dense 3D scene. But I'm wondering if you think the lessons you learn here carry forward, mm -hmm. or perhaps there's this interesting idea of can you synthesize a panorama uh, from the point of view of being closer to what you want to look at? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, we also try like uh, imagine this panorama as a three, 3D sphere, spherical, um, and we just like move the object like originally in center and move it, move it closer to the sphere, to the edge of sphere. And it will get distorted because like if you look forward, it is actually get closer to the panorama. But if you look around, it will like the closer it is, like the scene is like stretch a large, larger and uh, like further it, it stretch like, like compress, like suppress, like little. And you, you just like don't know what to do at that point. 
So that's a problem. We also try other um, possible ways to deal with this um, this uh, panning and zooming, and either with like uh, um, but none of them works great better than just like circle mode. So we stuck with this one. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, Junya Lee from Kai South Korea. Uh, very interesting talk and uh, a very practical one too. Um, this might be a, a silly question. Is there a reason why it has to be a circle and not a square or an, uh, any other polygon or shape? Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice question. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, during this uh, study, we also tried, um, uh, like, f first to answer your question, why like circle is more like intuitive? Because we imagine like this problem as like you put a telescope like looking on the uh, on the top of a building, it's like very similar to that case. So it's more intuitive to users, and we also try other like f um, um, trans like. Um, Transition between the edge, like like more transition, but is almost the same performance. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Tim Dwyer, Monash University. Um, I was wondering uh, if you tried to stabilize the image at all when you're in zoomed mode, or whether um, whether that would even be possible. Oh, thank you. Um, so actually, I haven't mentioned in the uh, in the talk, but we already like before trying like circle mode, we already like like add damping damping like effect to um, help the stabilization. But yeah, it still doesn't like uh, good enough. Yeah. So I see. So this is already stabilized. It is already stabilized. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's talked like in details in the paper. How did you decide the size of the circle and why uh, there's four modes? I mean, like, is there any meaning for like each mode? Yeah, thank you for the question. We also uh, we try like a pilot study, like um, to ranging like the, the size of circle, and it's like a balance between the field of view and the motion sickness like effect. So we finally choose this.